Okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right, guys. <clears throat> Welcome to the Genius of Destiny episode. And so I would like to speak about the visions we have entered. And in some sense, just the idea or the intersection of the idea of genius and destiny. All right, because I'm talking about destiny, perhaps I shall see what is destined for this episode. Dear viewers, I'm starting from the position of a creature on a rock in the middle of nowhere. There is eight billion of us. There is one outer physical outer realm and there's eight billion inner realms. And what this means is that everybody is in the same world, but in their own way in the same world. You know, this life is so remarkable. We are a part of it, <clears throat> but we are not it. And you know something bizarre? Because we identify with birth, there is death, subjectively. Recently, I have been looking at theology. I have been wondering about the idea of religion, the idea of God, the idea of destiny. The thing about destiny, I was thinking, I was like, okay, you know, I remember, you know, <clears throat> you know, the, um, being raised in Iran, I remember people, you know, saying God willing, you know, <clears throat> or when somebody would do a backflip, like imagine some, you're at a market or somewhere and somebody does a backflip suddenly, like, you know, you know, people look at that person and they're like, mashallah, you know, it's like, look at God's will, you know. And so, in religion, there's this idea of destiny, and the whole idea of religion, uh, uh, believe it or not, this yogi gave a very incredible definition of religion, and he said, religion is God remembering himself. You know, there are some people, there are some, some men who try to, some human beings who try to remember God, you know, and then there are some beings Poetically, they are part of, I would say, the divine memory. You see, this world, it's so bizarre that it appears new, but nothing is new. You know, I remember when I was young, you know, my aunt had given me this Christmas gift. It was this orb, and it had, like, these fake, like, snow in it, and there was, like, a snowman in a small house, and you'd shake the orb, and, you know, the snow would move in it. But after some time, if you stop shaking it, everything would come down, everything would settle, and you would realize, like, you know, you had animated meaning. 
you know when I think about destiny the bizarre idea of it and I'm going to share with the viewers how I'm intersecting these two ideas the idea of what genius means <clears throat> and what the idea of destiny means and both of these ideas are very difficult to talk about because to some degree they are innate or intuitive or things that in some sense it's as if like the person's trying to uh, you know trying to calculate you know <clears throat> you know it's like it's it you know what it is it's kind of like the person looks at the sky for hours just for one one moment where the lightning strikes and they see it in the sky you know the thing about destiny is i'm pretty much like okay so if we have this notion this idea of god It's as if something created the world with the ending in mind. This is the idea I find fascinating. <clears throat> you know, there was a time where I was like, yo, when something works, everybody's like, yo, that's destined, you know? <clears throat> and when something doesn't work, they're like, yo, it wasn't meant to be, you know? The nature of man's mind is that he prefers his own reality over realities that could be truer than his. You know, the nature of man is that it's a creature which is kind of bizarre, you know, it's like from the religious angle, like, you know, this creature was made of clay, uh, an inconceivable creator imbued it with, like, you know, gave, uh, put its own breath in the clay, right, and then commanded this creation to name the celestial names and then commanded all the angels to bow, right? And, you know, I was thinking, like, what do these mean? What do these metaphors mean? Even, you know, sometimes they say religious religion is, like, metaphoric, right? Like its value or its meaning. And what's, in, what's bizarre is that it's as if, like, what could the idea of God be a metaphor for? You know, God is literally when a creature realizes the whole world is moving and it notices that it has an organization. You know, you know, on some level, we human beings, we're like, yo, we have free will. We, we create our destiny. You know, there's, uh, you know, business, you know, people in the tech sector where they say the best way to predict the future is to design it. Of course. You know, um, even though we, we consider that certain things are destined, the idea is that humanity and the human species is together discovering what this world is. You see, one advantage that our species, well, we have as beings in this world is that we don't know. I mean, okay, I'll talk about the disadvantage. It's like the bad news. We have no idea where we are as beings. The good news is we're not alone. There's a bunch of us here. You know, and there's 8 billion human beings on this planet. And you're telling me 8 out of 8 billion, you know, uh, we can't find enough great ideas to, in some sense, build an advanced civilization. Everything is here. You know, everything. You know, there was a time, <clears throat> you know, when I, when I had the vision to give these 10,000 talks in 2014, I was like to myself, I was like, yo, what am I going to talk about? And then I realized this mystery of finding content. <laughs> And I just opened my eyes and I noticed the content is everywhere. You know, existence is actually something that it, there is too much content. Because what is content? It's information. Do you know? <clears throat> but the thing is, it's like, how do we interpret the information? Really, what is the brain? It's a biochemical system that is interpreting information. Literally, we're designed to engage information. You know, it's as if, like, it wasn't enough that the world had, had it designed. Something had to interact with it. You see, it's like this world is not like a painting. It's more like an invention. Do you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's like an invention that has a capacity to, auto, to build itself, you know? Because I thought about it from a designer's perspective. When I say inventor, from an inventor's perspective, and I was like, okay, you know, I am not capable of understanding the concept of God because it is beyond the human mind. But let's say I attempt. Let's say I'm a human being and I hear this idea of God, right? And I'm like, yo, you know, this inconceivable being created everything and everything that moves is its, is its mind's will or is, or, or is its intent.
I don't know how to say it. But I just thought that if I invented an android and imagine I had an apprentice, like imagine there's this inventor, not me, I mean, let, let's say there's this inventor. <clears throat> and this imprint, uh, imp inventor has an apprentice. <clears throat> and let's say there's a group of inventors, you know, okay, here, I'll say this. The same thing that I feel, which is the Abrahamic story, the monotheistic story of what happened in heaven, in regards to the creation of man, people are going to get goosebumps in what I'm going to say next. It is literally the same scenario if a group of scientists created an android, put the android in a room, and one of the uh, scientists went into the room to deceive the android, and the rest of the scientists were just watching to see what the quality of their creation is. You know, the beautiful thing about this life really is that are we living it for, the, for man? Like, is this life for us, or is it for something else? Because think about it. You know, I want you, whoever you are listening, just think about it for a second. I, imagine you're in your own home and you have a guest, okay? And now I want you to imagine you're in the home of somebody else and you're a guest. Now imagine you're in some, you suddenly appear in somebody's home, <laughs> just teleport, just spontaneously appear in somebody's home. You don't know whose home it is, but you're getting comfortable living there. And this is the situation on earth. We don't know really what this place is and to be honest we still don't know everything is language games the species was afraid of of the unknown so it had to put a box on its head and that's you know why people you know go after knowledge they say knowledge is power but let me tell you knowledge is not power <clears throat> knowledge is momentum you know um or or depth do you know, but in, in some sense, it's not power. You know why? Because your knowledge, or let me say, it, we, of course, we can say there's types of knowledge. But when I say like, just imagine like, you know, <clears throat> there was a person who got a thousand PhDs, a person who had understood so many different concepts. But at, and then at, at the end, they're like, yo, these concepts, these ideas, are they going to go with me? You know, it's, it's like, what's the point of being a human being? When it's non, uh, when it's when it's only physical. I mean, this. Uh, I think materialism is is very dangerous. Do you know? And people are going to be like, "Why are you saying that, Mister Within? Is it because we're physical beings and that like that's the definition of danger?" <laughs> and I would say materialism is dangerous because it might make you quit the video game without discovering the full map. Whoever you are in this world, you know, as many great minds have said this, the world has no obligation to make sense to us. Many of us try to find meaning. Many people try to find themselves. Many people try to find truth. I, I will bet like right now, there's probably like, like one third of the human population, like looking at the sky and the stars and wondering what it all means. It has always been there. You know, the fascination with the world. And the bizarre thing is, like, think about it, dear viewers. You tell me. You tell me if, if, if the story we human beings are telling ourselves makes sense. Does it make sense that we are individuals in a changing world? Like, I, I do understand. I wake up the next day and my body's here. But in regards to the brain and the mind, you might not believe it, but every word I say, the type of image in the inner realms has come from like a dif different sector of my memory. Do you understand? Our moments are created with the fragments of other moments that our consciousness could complete. I have this theory that actually what's going on is that we are living in front of our eyes one it appears as one life but i would say maybe a human being on this planet psychologically experiences like close to like a million lifetimes and and, and somebody's gonna be like mr within what do you mean a million lifetimes <laughs> a million lifetimes in one lifetime I mean every time, like that means imagine you look at yourself in the mirror, you close your eyes, you open your eyes again and you look at yourself in the mirror and instead of thinking that's one continuity of self, it's actually frames of self. You see, if you slow down a film, you begin to notice the frames of each scene. And so when you slow down 
this egotistic, oblivious, running after desire to before we die kind of mindset. Do you know, it's not that, like, you know, there's moments where I, I see there's certain ideas that are huge, huge. Like, I could tell you that ideas have size. But their size is not in, in regards to physic, like physical sense. It's, it has size in the sense of its significance. I have no idea how our species hasn't gone extinct. I have no idea. Like when I look at it and I think about how did even creatures figure out how to reproduce... And I realized, yo, it's as if this world is so brilliant that before we were human beings that knew what to do, we were unconsciously part of the automation program of the world. And you know what's going to be very scary? Let me tell you something. Something weird's going to happen in the future. Every pet owner, you might suddenly look at your pet I don't know how to say it, but it's as if, imagine human consciousness was an early level that our ancestors completed. And we have matured into this level. Imagine like a school, imagine like a school that's just built and then generations of generations of students are just going into that building and the school, you know, it's like the school, like I think schools are like the weirdest places of energy here. <laughs> It's like a psychic went to a school and it's like, yo, get me out of this hell. <laughs> Anyways. To speak about destiny, one is speaking about a completed reality, a completed world. And you know, as somebody who I mean, I don't know how the history books will remember me, but I know how I, how I will remember myself. <laughs> it's as if in the wonders of, you know, the advanced civilization, I think actually I am maybe the only, I don't know, I think what, maybe the only human being that is talking this much about an, the advancement of civilization that is not just 100 years, 200 years. I am saying that it's a phase and we're going to freak out and it's not going to be like people think like yo is in the future is it going to be like world war 3 is it going to be like a somebody's going to accidentally press like you know uh, thermonuclear warfare or something you know or our world leaders going to be so arrogant and egotistical that they're going to destroy nations just so they felt good you know like who knows right like in regards to the outer realms what happens but i will tell you something that's going to happen in regards to the mind of human beings and we are living at the most bizarre time that means I would say the most bizarre time would be, of course, the time where human consciousness was just starting. Like that was probably torment. That means like from if you look at a caveman for, as a singular dimensional being, you're like, okay, it's just a fucking like, you know, like I, should, I should speak more uh, elegantly. <laughs> but you look at a caveman and you're like, okay, you know, there's savage animalism right there, you know. <clears throat> but then... I don't know how to say it, but I feel the earliest beings suffered the most, but nature was taking the burden of the suffering. We as conscious creatures have become responsible for our own state. I mean, any person on this planet that considers themselves a non-physical being, you're considering yourself as, as space. And you know, in some schools of thought, the soul is space. You know, it's like a riddle. What is it that's not an object? Your subject. And the person's like, yo, where are objects and subjects? And is that space? <laughs> you know,
You know, let me tell you what I have realized recently. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong in this. Accurate, I shouldn't say right or wrong. If I'm accurate or off. <clears throat> but I will tell you the reason human beings, they have a disconnect with divinity. And many people feel like that phase of, like, you know, we're in Kali Yuga right now. <clears throat> Let me tell you what it is. The human being, the concept of the human is an abstraction. The meaning of physical reality is an abstraction, implying that a crete and attention is utilizing a real event and manipulating it or in some sense shifting it. You see, like our brains come with a sort of Photoshop already installed. You know, you can look at anything, close your eyes and imagine putting it on a table and looking at it from different angles, you know. <clears throat> you know, there's moments I've had where I was like at a doctor's office or like at a bank or something somewhere. I had to wait a while, right? And for a second, I just closed my eyes and in my mind, I was walking. I was moving. We have an inner life. When I say there's an inner life, you think that's easy to say as a physical entity? You think, you know, in a, in a world where everybody thinks that it's only objects here, you know, and the subjects don't mean anything and imagination is unreal and we don't know why we have it, but we, you know, we don't know why we are get influenced by dreams and have experiences of altered states of mind and still think reality is physical. How can it be physical if it's a jar with liquid moving, Do you know? in this like like what is the skull right the human being is not like the stillness of the cosmos to have an accuracy to that degree we are a movement among many movements to notice you know and really believe it or not you know they said stillness and silence and silence and sure you might think like you sit down somewhere by a tree and meditate and that stillness and silence nobody's talking but you will realize that this world is never silent everything energy speaks through the language of manifestation and so really what we're doing here as beings is that it's kind of like a imagine different dimensions in one dimension destiny means the world has been completed it's another way of saying we are god's memory that's what destiny means that means every god, it's as if god has set something into motion that it already knows the outcome so for god nothing is new because it is creating the content of the reality right from a theological standpoint right and keep in mind guys this episode is uh, i you know i i said it at the beginning it's <clears throat> i've been contemplating theology lately and you know, I've, I've been contemplating even what, what it means to think that something has no meaning. To me, it's like as long as there's attention, as long as there's energy, as long as there's effort, something will happen. To be honest, in this life, you know, I would say a part of me really feels like it doesn't know what it's doing, but it feels like it can go forth still. There's something. It's as if, it's as if like... You know, from the inventor's point of view, everything is done. You know, it's as if like the argument that nothing is new to an eternal being, to a timeless being, what can, what is new? Novelty is <clears throat> just a reference point shifting. You know, it's as if like we considered human beings are growing and changing and becoming mature, but we never considered the world is, is the world becoming mature. What if the savageness of this world is just a young universe? You know, imagine it's a child, like imagine it's a universe like kindergarten level, do you know? Or imagine like right now the universe is, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me.
I don't know. It, it, I was just thinking like the universe, the savageness of the world could be based on the maturity of the universal organism. Okay. <clears throat> because humanized intent doesn't justify that which is beyond human. What does it mean to live in a world that is changing before we can understand it? Okay. All right, guys. I think everything's back to normal. To continue, hopefully it's audible. <coughs> You know, it's as if the confusing thing about reality is we don't know what, who it's for. Do you know, we don't know why it's happening. It's just happening and then as the effect, from the effect position we're trying to understand.
Oh, man. If there's destiny, there's no such thing as genius, smart, or stupid. And when we think about the most genius idea, and it, the idea is destiny. I mean, what are human beings doing? You know, why are we all living? We're living for the future. The future ends up becoming our destiny. Where every day we wake up and it's sequences of decisions. You know, the other, the other night I was just thinking, if there's destiny, there's no need for thinking. And even if there's thinking, it's as if the thinking's not thinking. You know, it's kind of like if the cosmos, if the whole universe is like a seed, this, the potential of the seed is its destiny. Right? So imagine every human being is like, is like some unique, their DNA is like some seed, and the DNA has been planted in the soil of the space-time continuum. And as this DNA sprouts, uh, as it sprouts, you know, as it bu- as, as it buds, and in some sense, <clears throat> the person begins to find that the per- the position of experience is the opening of worldhood. Like the idea is, like, you know, um, <clears throat> you first notice yourself, then you notice other selves, and it's kind of like you notice your world, then you notice other worlds. I don't know, I feel this is like proper multidimensional etiquette. (laughs) Oh man. If there's destiny, you know. I don't know what the point of living is, really. If everything already knows where it's going, if everything knows what to do, I don't understand what the purpose of consciousness is, right? And the only way consciousness makes sense is if it's tunneling its own way, if if it's creating its reality.
Okay. All right, um, sorry guys, I needed an intermission. <sighs> you know, to collect my thoughts, <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> you know, I'm talking about destiny. The genius of destiny and maybe this is this is the finale. You know, in all these years of giving these talks, I have felt <clears throat> there's something more to this world. And so we are, you know, the bringers of it. We are the bringers of the new dimensions that we discover. Knowledge is conversion. Reincarnation is conversion. Ultimately, what is here is the essence. The essence of human intelligence is not humanized. Meaning that if man goes towards subjective truth, he will become dehumanized. And if he goes towards objective truth, where he thinks that really his humanism is, he will also become dehumanized. The great poet Rumi said just like a bird has two needs two wings to fly the mind needs chaos in order to function and i would say the extremes of reality i was i would i'll be honest i was uh <clears throat> this is i guess the genius of destiny where it's as if it, it reveals one dimension, but in some sense you see you have missed, on all the, uh, missed out on the other things you can see. You know, as someone who embarked on this path to give 10,000 talks, I was thinking like, okay, It's as if it's been nine years. Nine years, 2,000 talks. T 
times that by five, it's going to take me like maybe 50 years. So, I have to, as a human being, wonder now, do I want to dedicate my life to this art form? <clears throat> or, as the great poet Rumi also has said, love is a madman taking off his clothes, running into the forest. <laughs> and it's this poetic idea of like a human being freeing themselves from their reality, you know? <clears throat> they serve their species. <clears throat> they may forget that they are missing one person they are not serving. And so I think this is what I have realized, you know? It's either death by discussion, <laughs> death by, death by, <clears throat> you know, speech, I shouldn't say death by speech, but I should say like, you know, it's like I'm at that point as a human being where I was like, yo, this was, this was a dream. It was an ambition. It was a vision, but is it practical? <clears throat> you know, and unfortunately with the habits I have, you know, You know, when I was when I was young, really young, me and my uh, twin brother, I remember we were in my uh, my parents. You know, would leave us with my grandparents, <clears throat> and I remember me and my brother were really young, and my grandmother, this you know, religious you know Islamic lady, you know, very kind-hearted, you know, <clears throat> a woman who's been a housewife her whole life, very kind-hearted. And she would get this like sage or beetroot. I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was something, right? And in Farsi, it's called esfant. <clears throat> and she would in some sense get this kind of like, like smoke kind of like in this kind of like small, like, uh, like mini pot. I don't know. To, I don't know what the word for it is, but <clears throat> <laughs> Pretty much she would just um, take smoke, like this, 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 like, what do you call it? Sage, like, moment, you know, my whole life, you know, it's like, this is something bizarre, I will say. It's like, as a smoker, I've been smoking cigarettes for years now. <clears throat> and it's bizarre how my life, I was thinking, like, when I, when I was young, there were so many things I would see that I never thought, you know, I would engage. But who knows, you know, life sculpts you. And you try to, you know, make it have a gentle hand, really. So what it is, is... <clears throat> as much as I try to love my own dreams and visions... You know, it's kind of like... <clears throat> I was digging a tunnel in like a imagine this world is a mountain and imagine like all these talks I've given on like this like prospector you know <laughs> and I'm just like you know tunneling in the space time continuum constantly <clears throat> wondering about positions and 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 then it's like imagine a person who's been tunneling for years and suddenly realizes the mountain is too big that they he, they can't complete the tunnel and so what does the prospector do? It's like, what am I holding in my hand and goes and does something else, you know? <clears throat> and who knows, you know? But what it is, is it's also like reaching that point where I have conceptualized reality to a point where it, like there's nothing else to conceptualize. Pretty much you reach a certain point where you see it's like <clears throat> an all you can see buffet of perception. Literally, there's infinite viewpoints and there's even viewpoints people haven't discovered and the future generations will. That means there's so many ways to look at this world, both discovered and undiscovered, <clears throat> that it's not possible as a human being to really 
understand knowledge like it's knowledge looks cool but but in some sense to comprehend it you know it's like what is the knowledge are we looking for the knowledge of handling a changing world or are we looking for knowledge as if it's like a you know sticker they stamp put on our eyes dear humanity i don't know who all of you are but we're all in the same room we're all in the same cosmic room and so, you know, there was a point where I was like, do I have the capacity to love every being in this world? You know, it's as if like, you know, it's, you know, something I've tried to do since I've been young is to be honest. And I was like, when I, and the power of honesty is that you get, <clears throat> you know, your simplest perception of mind, which is another way of saying like, you can trust life. Any person who I'm telling you, you do like probably like more than three dishonest acts and you're going to probably have a subconscious conclusion that this world is fucked. <laughs> you know, keep in mind in, uh, in theology, the idea of the fallen angel was the idea of a being that rather than changing himself to align to the divine order, it had to change the world. So this is really the difference between an angel and devil. The devil has to change the world to change itself. You know, but the angel life, the meaning of life, I'll simplify it for viewers. <laughs> <coughs> the meaning of life is that it's an opportunity. There's something to do. Why else do we exist? You know, even the idea of death is like, you know, or the idea of suffering as the Buddha saw, like suffering, you know. <coughs> disease old age all of these things you know it's 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 like we're we have a culture that's everybody's trying to look perfect but we're designed as biological creatures like a bell curve and rather than having the decency as a species to try to create a great collective experiences let me tell you something the rich people in this world are stupid and the uh, the poor people on this world are stupid do you know <clears throat> and let me tell you why because they haven't helped each other yet because one side can't forgive the the past, you know, and the other side can't let can't you know uh, uh, stop desiring the future, you know. And you know what's funny? We all wear a jacket in this lifetime called self, but then we take it off once we meet the unknown, once we enter the unknown. And so that's the privilege of li this lifetime. You might be a being that you're gonna. I, I gave a talk on this that <clears throat> one strategy to death is the type of being they are being now. That's your greatest strategy. That means some beings, they're like, yo, man, you know, it's like, I wanna be this, I wanna be that. That's again, no, no, known image, known image. But how many people want to be the unknown? Do you understand how rare a mystic is? To care for an unknown world when every knowledge is literally like like waves of information, do you know? It's kind of bizarre, but it's like the simple soul is under attack. It's like avalanches of perceptions and realities and so much geometry. There is so much geometry to this world that at some point the person was like, okay, I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> So what I can say, the genius of destiny is, is that the genius is all everything, all acts of intelligence is trying to make it easier for us to get through whatever this world is. And out of all the species on this planet, we are the only species that has a capacity to separate itself from the environment <clears throat> and create a mental environment that it overlays on the outer environment and believes that. Do you know what I'm saying? That means imagine you, you wore a mask, right? And then somebody saw your face and they're like, yo, what happened to your face? You know, and you're like, relax, man, it's a mask. But imagine they thought the mask was your face. You know, there was a time, I mean, when I say there was a time, like I think it was yesterday. <laughs> <clears throat> I think the day before, but anyways, there was a moment 
where I was like just before sleeping I was in my bed just staring at the ceiling as you do and for a moment I was like what if God is alone what if no one understands God and God doesn't like it? You know, it's like, yo, my creations don't even understand me. Like, what is this? And the angels, they, it's like they don't have personalities. They just listen to whatever I say. You know, it's like an eternal being is tired, you know, of just being itself. Do you see how playful a simulation is? But when the fear of the animal mind infuses with it, you think you're in a death trap, you know? But in reality, where we are, dear viewers, this is the most liberating thing, idea I have come to. Where we are is an unknown world. Call it whatever you like. Try to fit this world into language. And you'll notice, you know, <clears throat> the creators of the alphabet laughing at you. This world is working on layers of geometry. I understood the secrets of complexity when I was drawing art on a piece of paper, literally drawing lines. And I was like, yo, I can draw straight lines and I could draw curved lines. And ultimately, it's, it's, if the more effort continues, think about it. When you are young, people are like, yo, man, when I was young, life was simpler. And it's like, obviously, because your brain had less self simulations. Do you understand? We are all in, in this strange training mode in the inner realms. It's, it's very bizarre, but it's even though it appears as like the existence of a biological entity, what is occurring with the cognitive system and the way it's noticing itself is that it's like a once, it's like something we're looking, consciousness is like literally how they say that the, the eyes are the windows of the soul. Something is looking through something. Do you know, imagine somebody... <coughs> You know, there's more I want to say, and my laptop has 10% batteries, 6% battery. <clears throat> and I'm thinking like, all right, to finalize this. In life, we make decisions. We don't know if these decisions are right or wrong, and we don't even know if there is like, how seriously we should look at uh, <clears throat> moral relativism you know it's like to think about life is so strange because everybody's brain is reinventing the wheel the world you know Our greatest advantage in this world is that we don't actually understand it. We don't know what it is. Which means it could be beyond our reality or it could be, you know, beneath our reality. I can fathom, you know, beings that have no bodies because they're just space. Just like our mind is like space with a body in it. If you've noticed, your mind is how the awareness is being the whole moment. And yogis understood that the present reality, how you are being present as a being, is sur surpasses <clears throat> how your attention is on a personality. So let me tell you what's going on. Imagine you are the bird of infinity. Imagine you are, your soul has the wings of paradise. And as you journey through this world, <clears throat> you may not understand what you see, but the power of your wings is unquestionable. The power of the flight of man, you know, it's, it's as if something is brought.